So check out this garden. Now, James Beauchier and Chris Morrison are two brothers who live out on the west coast, but they work in the city, so they've got busy lives. Now, we've got four raised beds here with one additional bed up behind me, and these are two beginner gardeners, so look what they've managed to produce in only a matter of three or four months. It's a north-facing garden. As you can see, it's completely sun-soaked, and that's why all these plants are doing so well. Whilst it's sun-soaked, it gets regular watering too. There's a water supply tucked up into the bush there, so water is close to hand. Now, because the soil here was so rubbish, it's really heavy clay, James and Chris went for raised beds. So the guys have made their beds out of macrocarpa timber. Now, that needs no treatment, so there are no chemicals in it. It's just got natural oils. This will probably still last about 15 years. What they've done, because it's a really hot, sunny spot, they've made these raised beds a little bit deeper. Normally, we go for about 450, that's chair height, but the guys have gone for 600, so these beds are nice and deep, they're cool, they hold on to the moisture. Chris and James spent a lot of time at the start creating a really good, dense, nutrient-rich soil. That's a growing medium that's going to really support their plants, and they keep adding to it all the time. That's the secret. Mulching with compost keeps your soil nice and rich. Now, James and Chris spend less than two hours a week tending to their plants. How do they get such good results? They're using a crop rotation method, so they're grouping plants into their different groups in terms of soil conditions, growing conditions, and the time that they come to harvest. And whilst there's a lot of fruit right now, and a lot of plants that are ready for harvest, they've also got smaller plants that are in there starting to move through into the next phase of the garden's productivity. It's almost unbelievable to think that all this foliage comes out of one raised bed, but the guys have got so much going for them. Look, there's a really nice little crop of pumpkins coming here, and there's more of them tucked away. And up in the bed itself, we've got an awesome crop of corn that's almost ready for harvest. Now, that's a pretty good haul of butternut squashes for a first attempt, eh? Chris and James have been harvesting from their garden for at least a couple of months now, and these cucumbers are still being highly productive. One of the reasons for that is that there's a beehive just up there, so they're pollinating the flowers. So James and Chris are getting nature to help them out wherever possible. They've planted loads of really bright, open-faced flowers in their veg beds, and these draw the bees down into the vegetable garden, so that helps with pollination and good produce, but it also draws in beneficial predatory insects like hoverflies. Their larvae just eat aphids all day long. Check this out. Am I green with envy? I think so. When planning a vegetable garden, there are a few really useful things to think about from the outset. You want your garden to be in as accessible an area as possible. Try and utilize the best soil you've got in your garden for your vegetable plot as well. Um, vegetables need heaps of sunshine, so the warmest spot is ideal. A spot that's sheltered from prevailing winds, um, any frost pockets, and the worst of the weather that your area is likely to throw at you. It's quite useful to put your vegetable garden next door to other parts of the garden that you find yourself in quite often, because then you'll find yourself in your vegetable plot for those little trips in and out that can be really useful in terms of maintaining good um, watering levels, checking for pests and diseases. It's important to have a good water supply that's easy to access as well, so you can get your plants watered without it being too much of a hassle, and a composting area reasonably close by for all that waste material. Now, the last thing to think about is this, that don't underestimate by any means how much space you'll want to set aside for your vegetable plants once you start to see your first harvest. So be as extravagant as possible, but balance that with your lifestyle. 